Hey guys, welcome back to another Flesh and Blood video. Uh, so today we have something a little bit different. Um, this is more of like a Dash League, um, as I'd like to call it. So in Magic, um, in, in Magic Online, you have what's called Leagues, and you play five games with a certain deck against random opponents. So now that Fab Online is a thing, you can kind of recreate that in this game. Um, so what I have is, you know, like it's three to five games. I can't remember exactly how many it is, but it's like a small league where I play Dash against random opponents and just kind of get some games in. Um, games were pretty interesting, and I really enjoyed it. Um, Dash is still a front runner um, mm -hmm. in my choices for nationals here in a few weeks. Um, but I'm feeling, I don't know, I feel pretty good about it, and I really like the games. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy the games, guys. Um, can't, like, speak highly enough about Dash. Oh, so we're playing against Prism. Um, let's see. So against Prism, we're going to bring in... Um, we will... We're going to take out the Unmovables. Bring in the Teclo Pounders. And right now we're at 61. Let's try it like this. We need the blues to make our blue count work without the blue immovables being in there. Um, I don't know. I've, I've, I've not, I, honestly, the deck's not set up to play against Prism, really, so I'm kind of interested to see what this feels like. Um, and I will choose to go second. Or why did I... I did not mean to pick... I... I hope I pick going first. That's definitely not what I wanted to. Um, we're definitely going to start with an induction chamber. So I definitely meant to go first, and I just clicked on the wrong thing there. So that was uh, that was a bit of a misclick there. All right, so my opponent puts Parable of Humility into play and passes. I love Dash, but I'm playing very budget version. I can't afford Tecla Foundry Heart Crown and uh vizier hey man i get it like sometimes you gotta play on a budget like that's you know that's like one of the things about the game is that sometimes you just end up on a budget man like i there's no shame in that no shame whatsoever all right so my opponent plays parable and passes so let's see here have to announce prism and then yeah i'm gonna boost so i'm coming in for four here normally you can pressure prism's life total enough to make the game pretty good for you um Um, so normally it would be correct to start by loading the pistol here um, and playing high speed impact first, but considering it's coming in for three, I don't find it super relevant. Uh, we're going to load the pistol and then we're going to attack Parable of Humility. So that'll end my turn. Uh, we'll put zipper hit there. All right, and this is a this is a pretty decent hand. Uh, pistol still has a counter on it? That's kind of weird. I wonder why. You got this? Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, let's see here. I'm going to say no blocks here. Uh, and then I'm going to block three and take three here. Passing Mirage. Okay, so... Attack Prism. Uh, yeah, I'll boost. Hit a blue T-bone. Do I have to be weary of our card count here? Um... All right, they're not trying to fatigue us, so that's pretty cool. This looks different. Is there flesh and blood matchmaking now? Um, yeah, so they actually put something into the game where you can actually 
um, play against other people, kind of like I do with Magic. Um, so I'm actually kind of excited to try it. Um, I've been playing it a little bit online. It's kind of fun. Uh, we'll pass here. Yeah, we'll boost, hit a zipper hit. That's great. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, actually, uh, Kyle was playing earlier, and he uh, he seemed to be enjoying it pretty well. Um, attack Prism. Did I just... Okay, I was like, I didn't think I had a chance to pick a reaction there. Wow. All right. Yeah, so I like that it does all this for you. This is pretty cool. It's just going to take me a little while to get used to the client. I'm not really following why it... Why it leaves the pistol loaded? I don't think it's supposed to do that. I feel like that might be like a little error in the game. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, we don't have a bust or anything here, so I'm just gonna take six. Ooh, and then I'm gonna take an extra one. Okay. Good play by my opponent. Puts me to 23. And then, um, I don't think I want to use one of my equipment slots here. Um, yeah, I think I'd rather just take two and go to 21. I'm still in a pretty decent, pretty decent position here. I'm also using Fab Online and playing tons of games with it. Yeah, dude, I literally just discovered what this was yesterday, and I can't speak highly enough of this game. Dude, like, Fab Online is awesome. This game is, this game is really cool, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so I really want to save the High Octane here for in case they load up another Aura, um, for the following turn. So let's see, I can pitch one, uh, come in for four, and then pistol, pistol, pistol them, pistol owed. So they go to 18. Or I could just try to go off with a high octane turn and just put them down quite a bit. I mean, it is, it is quite a bit of damage here to try and do that. I don't know. Let's, let's go for it. It's a little more aggressive than I'm used to. Um, so we get a high octane and we get to arsenal one here. That seems pretty good. Yeah, that feels pretty solid here. Um... Yep, I'll boost. Now, hitting a Purifier kind of sucks there because one of the best ways um, to win this matchup late game is to load up on items. Ooh, that's really good. So we'll activate the Heart. Go up to two, and we have two action points here. Attack them. Yeah, we'll boost again. You can press F11 for full screen. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you for... I am so glad you knew that. I was actually wondering how weird it was going to be to have the video with all the cards looking so small. So, thank you. That's actually a huge help. Thanks for that, man. Um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, I have no reactions. My opponent sink belows. So they still get to keep... Um... Alright, so we'll attack Odorath. Alright, I, I... I don't really understand why the game is allowing us to do that. Like, maybe that's something... Like, I don't think that's a rules interaction I don't really understand. Uh, 
I don't know. It feels pretty weird. All right, they're going to put an Odorath into play. And a Haze Bending. All right, that's pretty good for them. Now, it works out for us because we have a... We have a high speed, or we have a high octane here to clean up all of their stuff here. Hitting that is pretty solid. They're still at 20. I don't really want to pop the Goliath Gauntlet yet. Feels like it's a little aggressive here. Um, let's come in at them for six here. This feels good. And you hate to, well, you hate to see another bus go out the drain like that, but. Soul Shield, that's a good one. I have no reactions here. Hey, thanks for the follow, man. I appreciate it. Um, we'll come at them for five here. Okay. Um, combat resolved with no hit. Your card was put on the bottom of the deck. Okay, so they did choose to do that. Um, so it's better to kill Haze Bending first. I still really don't understand why the game is doing this. Um... Now I'm just going to cancel this. Um, I am going to load this up. And then attack them for two. Choose a reaction. It's so nice that I don't have to like click a thousand things um, <laughs> to put a bunch of things on the stack here. And then our opponent blocks with Shimmers of Silver. And then we're just going to pass and draw up here. Do it like that. Our opponent just arsenals and passes here. That's interesting. By the way, if you made a mistake, you can always undo. Click the menu on the top right corner and you will see an undo option. Yeah, so I actually saw that earlier when I was playing with uh, one of my cousins. And I thought that was pretty cool that there's that undo option there. Um, it's pretty neat, honestly, that that's something that they allow you to do. What is this? Is this their soul? Oh, there's three cards in their souls, what they're telling me. Um. Yep. So we're going to come in with Yellow Throttle for five here. We're still at 34 cards in our deck, and our opponent's uh halfway half like their their life total is halfway under I like that we'll put red throttle in the stack now that is three of our bus is that another chain is that a chamber we hit Purifier and Chamber, which means there is a Purifier left in the deck. Um, let's activate Heart. Load Chamber. Load Pistol. Attack. Waiting for them to choose an instant. Choose.
choose Chambers Reaction. Uh, I was so happy in sharing the Dash 1 calling Singapore and Metallishar even. Yeah, dude, so that was honestly hilarious. Um, I was super happy to see... Uh, I would be lying if I said I could remember his name off the top of my head, but I was so happy to see Dash win. Uh, Dash win a calling like that. It was honestly awesome. Um, I was a little surprised that he was playing Talishar in his deck because, you know, most of the time, like, people always laugh and say Talishar is a meme. Um, and, and it is a little bit, but yeah, it was, it was cool. I watched the finals and it was, uh, he, he played really well. Like, he was a very good Dash player. Um... Let's come in for four, and we'll boost here. Our opponent's going to block four. Now every dash player looking for Talishar. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, Come in for three here. Opponent blocks two, takes one, goes to 13. And then... Load chamber. Load pistol. They block with a haze bending. We will choose the reaction of go again. Yep. Oh. I guess it gives me a chance to do something. And then I'm going to load the pistol again. And then come in for two. And I imagine they'll be blocking with their footsteps again here. Taking one, going to 12. Yep. I mean, if that's the case, we are slowly but surely, um, no instance, and we'll arsenal the zipper hit. Wow, this is a bad hand. This is a really, really, really weird hand. All right, so one of our blues can go to pistol chamber pistol, um... And then we can pitch another blue for Zipper Hit and Tecla Pounder to end on the Pounder. Um, yeah, that sounds good. We'll do that. Load Chamber. Load Pistol. And then we will attack for two. Now, our opponent's more than likely not taking any damage this turn. Or maybe they're deciding to take all the... Oh, they're going to play that all you got? Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That all you got is so good into the pistol. I mean, it's not when you get any purifier into play, but... Um... Let's see... We'll come in for five here with go again. Um, hang on just a second. I'm getting a phone call here.
Okay, sorry about that. All right, I had a phone call. All right. Um, okay, so... Oh, they're coming in for seven? Um, we'll say no blocks here. We'll just take seven. Should, probably should have looked at my hand first to see, <laughs> see if I wanted to block. Um, so what's on my... In your expert opinion, is Dash still viable without Tekla Foundry Heart and Crown? So I'm going to be honest. I'm still playing Skullcap because... I like to be able to block uh, more than I do like having the crown effect, um, but I've never played it without heart. Um, I kind of got into the game and spent too much money at one time, if you want the truth. Um, so honestly, I'm not sure, and I'm sorry, I wish I had a better answer for you than that, um, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so uh, it, it might be viable. Like, honestly, you might could make that happen, you know, if you... It, uh, I'm not sure what the sub pieces would be. After this game, we can look and see what some of the good sub pieces would be um, to figure out there. All right, let's start on the pistol here. Activate tunic for a resource. You gonna flash in arc light here, bro? Okay. Um. Choose a reaction. We'll pick go again. Would have been bad to just give away our entire turn right there. Iron Rot Helmet and VOTFF. I'm not sure what VOTFF is. Sorry. VOTFF. Best of the first fist. Oh, okay. Um, so, I mean, my immediate reaction is that I don't like, um, that Vest of the First Fist doesn't block. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't seem... Let's see, this will be... I can come in for here with a break point, here with a break point, here with a break point. Or I can pitch this to do this and then have one left over and do all of the above. Um, it's probably better to do it this way. I mean, Vest of the First Fist is a good card. Um, I mean, I was playing it in, like, a, at a five build I was using for a while. Like, it's not a bad card at all. Um, the one thing that I have to say that would concern me about that is, um, is that, you know, it doesn't block. Um, that, that's, like, my first concern there. But I mean, Vest is like Vest is a good card and can help you push out some like heavy damage for fast. I think my opponent f swapped to the fatigue plan here a little bit. And then I'm going to choose not to boost here. My opponent only has one card in hand here, so they can only block. I mean, they block three, take two, go to ten here. I don't know. My opponent's trying to fatigue me, so, I mean, we gotta we got to play tight here and try to get the games in. There's no... I was like, if there's... Yeah, see, Soul Shield is so bad. I like, that, like, what is that? Is that all three Soul Shields? Yeah, that's really good for them. Like, they're only halfway through their deck and they've seen all three. All right. Okay. So, let's think this through. We could... Are there any Teclo Pounders left in the deck? Yeah, that means the other Teclo Pounders in there. Um, which means we could search for it. So... Let's see here.
All right, let's load the pistol, pitching a T-bone. Oh, 12 points and only... 12 points and only 15 cards is a lot to overcome here. All right, let's come in for five. Yep. We want to boost, get rid of Spark of Genius. Okay, so they'll block four, take one. Um, we're going to cancel that action. Well, that sucks. I think that's the other payload. That leaves us with only the one we have in our hand. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Man, uh, they've seen all three soul shields and all three that all you got so far. And that's just, like, honestly, that's backbreaking. Did I just... No, okay, I was like, did I... There's no way I just passed. And they have an Oasis Respite. They decided to start fatiguing me pretty late in the game, I feel like. And I could be crazy here, but I think that... Let's see. What does Oasis Respite read? Prevent the next four damage. That would be dealt to target hero by source of your choice. So it will prevent the damage. Um, so we might as well just pass an arsenal here. We don't have an instant. There is the Teclo Pounder. I'm gonna be honest, I think I don't really care about that card. Okay, so I can. Pitch, play, pitch, pop, come in for two if I need it. Alright, we're gonna activate Goliath Gauntlet. They pitched an Arclight Sentinel a few minutes ago, so hopefully they don't have one here. Um, we're gonna come in here first because the Teclo Pounder makes it for two or for five. Um, which is a breakpoint number. Yeah, so it gives us 0 to 60 for 5 and zipper hit for 4, which are both breakpoint numbers, which is really good. And then they're going to block 4 here. Take 1. We're going to play zipper hit, attacking them, passing. And then, yeah, we're going to boost. I think I might have played too aggressively this game instead of playing into the Pounder plan here. Or instead of playing into the Chamber plan. Um, yeah. Man. They, they have had really good stuff so far. Now, 8 dominates nothing to shrug at. Gosh, that's all three sink belows. That's all three sink belows. All three that all you got. All three soul shields and two of their three oasis respite. That is actually just insane. Wow, that is so good. Our opponent has had really good draws here, and we just hit an all four hand here. Or wait. What? Our 
Our opponent must have hit undo or something. Oh, they undoed and went back too far, and so they wanted to attack with their Pierce Reality. That makes sense. Yep, we'll attack them. I don't think we're going to be able to cross the finish line this game. We didn't see any of our plasma purifiers this game. Um, we boosted over all of our items. So I just, I don't think we're going to be in a spot to... I don't think we're going to be in a spot to win here. Um, we will attack with the pistol. We're going to pick a card to block with. We're going to give go again. So they only have one card left in their hand. And unless it's like another defense reaction, they can probably block three. All right. So we're going to... All right, hang on. So I need to be able to... I need two resources here because I'm going to activate Accelerator. And then I'm going to need one... Uh, so I have one I'm going to need, which means I need one, and then I, so I do need to heart. Puts me down to three. All right, so it's this or nothing. Load the pistol up. Yep, we'll boost. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get there. Yeah, if they ended up fatiguing us. We, we played too aggressively into the boost plan instead of playing into the... Yep, and then we'll attack for two, and then they'll not block with the heart for some reason. It's pretty weird. Um, I don't think there's a way out of this. Yeah, we're just going to concede here. So game one was really interesting uh, because I played against Prism, which ironically is now LL, and that that BNR announcement got released today. Um, so uh, you can't play Prism anymore starting tomorrow. Um, but the Prism game was super interesting. Uh, my opponent started out playing pretty aggressively into me, um, and you know trying to you know uh, trying to race me. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I started using Heart pretty actively and was trying to just get as much damage to as I could. And then my opponent swapped to the Fatigue roll. And they did this at the perfect time because it allowed them to fatigue me um, and they were going to end up winning the game there. And they still had like 20 cards left. So, I mean, you know, it was very well played by my opponent, but it was a, it was a good close match. I, uh, I do enjoy the Prism matchup um, from the Dash point of view. So I'm not super sad to see her go. I also like playing Prism, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. A, a Prism oppressed a lot of decks. So I, part of me is glad to see it gone, I guess. <laughs> a little tough. Ooh, Dramai. Interesting. Uh, player two will go first. So it's weird that the best the best luck I've had so far is by racing Dromai. Um, so we're gonna try it again and see what can happen here. I didn't really get to play against like a Bravo or 
or anything like that. And, you know, Bravo is really what I like, really what I want the control package for. Uh, a lot of the decks in the format, uh, I'm just looking to race. So. I mean. This sounds really good. Um, it's not perfect, but the devs are, de are constantly updating the client. Yeah, see, I mean, and that's awesome. Uh, this is by far the least impact card in my hand. We're going to block with a 0 to 60, because right now with a blue combustible courier and a high-speed impact, we're able to just... We're actually able to just like, you know, come in and do the whole bit here. Yep, we'll pass here. It's turn one, I really don't want to take any damage, so we'll block here with the blue. Um. I'm actually going to take three here. I'm not normally I'm normally not a huge fan of doing that and taking any amount of damage on turn one, but I believe that Combustible Courier is one of those high impact cards. So we were we were rewarded by you know keeping the Combustible Courier. Um, don't know what our next card would have been, you know, obviously, but th this is pretty good, you know, like, I, I, I feel pretty, pretty solid about this hand. Um, we're going to put a decent amount of pressure on here, uh, coming with a combustible courier at our opponent. Could hit the Dromai, but then we're just missing out on six points of damage. Um, and, you know, honestly, if our opponent's going to block six here, I'd rather just strip two cards with the other hand. Um... So, the fact that our opponent is playing Phantasmal Footsteps tells me that they are playing more attack actions. Um, ooh, blocking with Furnace on turn one. They just openly took the one there. That's interesting. Well... That's pretty good because now we get to T-bone for six here. Um, I mean, that's that's pretty solid. I'm I'm surprised that our opponent let that hit. I just honestly wasn't expecting to see that at all. And they block with Crown here. Okay. I'm gonna Arsenal. Ah. Uh, uh. I'm going to hit their Ash Wing. I think I'd rather try and control the board just a little bit here. Um, and then I can pass, no instance, and then I can arsenal my Throttle. And so I drew a Bust, um, which is pretty great. Oh, so they did hit a red card. Um, yeah, so we're just going to take four here. Um, the T-Bone in our hand, you know, just kind of just kills the dragon, and they have nothing left to do here, so. You Silk form pretty aggressively there. That, that's interesting. Our opponent's playing very aggressively here, and I'm, I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm interested, I'm intrigued by our opponent's choices here, um, it's very possible they're playing Jomai for the first time and they're trying to get used to the client. Um, so, do you know what's the mod name for Fab on TTS? Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I'm sorry, man. I do not. Um, so, I mean, let's come in for six...
be surprised if our opponent blocked here, honestly. They decide, okay, they're going to sink below. All right, yep, that seems good. Um, no reactions for me. We will attack Dromai for five. They'll block with Passing Mirage. Take three, go to 32. Ooh, we have made a slight miscalculation here. That has four health, not three. Well, they are going to get to keep an Ash Wing. I thought we were going to get to sweep their board, but I should have read more <laughs> instead of just thinking that it was three. So getting myself a little bit there for not paying a ton of attention. All right, I get to kill the dragon. Pass. Draw up. Guess we'll just pass here. Nope, no reactions. So I'm gonna go to 27 here, which is fine. I really wanna save my equipment for the Snatch Dragon. The Kyloria is a real problem. Um, Yep, we'll come in for six here. On hit, plus three. If they let this hit again, I would be amazed. Wow. They're actually going to... Yeah, I mean, we're going to boost because it lets us come in for nine here with the throttle. Block five, take four. Yeah, it doesn't matter how they go back. Yep, I will go to 26. Uh, we're going to load the pistol. Sigil of Solace, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not feeling, not feeling super confident about this game right now. Uh, they take one. Boost away. The fact that our opponent didn't block there makes me want to attack again. They've just decided no blocks the rest of the way this turn. I mean, any chance we can, like, the Ashwing is not that big of a deal. Now, those things can get out of hand, but hmm, that's an interesting hand. Kramai gets an action point. Um... So we'll block three, save some life here. We'll take the one. Now we are gonna get to we are gonna let our opponent kind of live the dream here. Oh no. Crap, it, it auto passed. I wanted to hang on. Sorry, opponent. Um and then choose a card to arsenal. That's definitely what I wanted to do. Sorry, opponent.
sweeping blow, making ash. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, I know they get their action point back, but... <laughs> I like the uh, little phantasm thing that they did there. Yep. And I'll go to 20 and then they'll play Passing Mirage. Um... Okay, spark for spark for two is pretty cool there, and you know the the automation is pretty pretty simple. I, I do like I enjoyed how easy that was. So and then we'll arsenal high octane. Yeah, I mean, odds are we're just taking whatever our opponent does here because we're going to be able to come back in spades. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, we're taking it all. We're going to go to 14, then we're going to go to 13, and then if their last card comes in, we're going to have to deal with that too. They might have like a Ravenous Rabble or something like that. Draw another card. So I'm going to be honest, with that many resources left, I'm just going to play the other high octane, see what comes of it. So... We're going to attack our opponent for five here. Five go again, and we will have a metaphorical ton of action points after this. It's a good play by my opponent, realizing that they can. Oh, they didn't pay. Okay, I thought my opponent was going to pay there. Um, BRB. Okay, man, sounds good. I think block for three. Figured it did. They take one. So we'll do that. Yep. No, 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 no. So we'll hit cancel. What we really want to do is load this. No. Ugh. It's not what I wanted to do. Good lord. Sorry, opponent. Now you're just kind of watching me do things anyway, but... Then we'll attack our opponent here. Yep, we'll send no reactions. 
our opponent will go to 16. Come in for two. Our opponent goes to 14. Um, we will come in for two. Pop this to get an action point. And then, yeah, we'll just attack our opponent here. See no reason to Well Caloria sucks because if they attack with Caloria before they do anything else then All right, so what are we doing here? We can block, which is we're pitching that to do that and do that, but we can't end the chain there, so we're probably better off to do that and keep that. Um, so we'll block five here. Seems okay. And then I'll go to nine. Then my opponent will come in and put me to eight. And that's okay. All right. So we're going to load the pistol. Yep, we'll boost. This is coming in for six. Our opponent block six. Yep, we'll boost, get go again here. We'll come in for three. So block with footsteps and take three, go to seven. And then we will attack Caloria. We cannot have that thing on the field. The Snatch Dragon is a real problem for us. Okay, we have Goliath Gauntlet left. So that means I can zipper hit, activate heart. Yeah, we'll block a skull cap here because we're at less life. It's just a good value block here. We'll take one. The Ether Ashwing comes in, puts us to four. That's fine. And then they pass their turn. Okay, that feels that feels pretty good. All right, so huh, this is tough here. So we're gonna come in for eight. I think we might have gotten there. I just don't think they'll have enough cards. Like, if they have a couple of defense reactions or something, they might can do something. But, I don't know. This this feels this feels okay for us. Um, we're coming in for eight. Go again here. And then we're going to activate heart. Uh, they must have a defense reaction here. Yeah, well, they have to. I have no reactions. You go to six. Um, I will go to one to activate heart. Go up to three, crack Goliath gauntlet.
And then we're going to boost, come in for four. Hmm. That's pretty good. And then we get to eight dominate, which I hope clears up the game. I mean, they can block one if they don't have a defense reaction and take seven. I mean, I guess they can block footsteps and take six. And then honestly, well, they don't have a way to give go again. GG. Okay, cool. All right, so, I mean, our opponent. Yeah, all right, so we ended up getting that game. It was a close one, but we ended up... Okay, so a couple things. You'll notice that the record now says 1-1 one one instead of 0-1. Oh um, I played a Bolton game in the middle, and my opponent quit halfway through, so I was like, well, technically I'm 1-1, one and, one, and I would count this if, you know, I was playing in a league or something, but it didn't really count. Um, and so, you know, instead of putting, like, half the video clip in there, I just didn't... Um, but the Dromai um, dash matchup is really interesting. Um, you know, we only have six busts in my version of the list, so it is it is interesting and, and does make it for, you know, you need your bust to come at the right time. I um, ended up winning, um, kind of just playing like a little bit of aggro dash there. Um, you know, normally I like to play the pistol items and the Teclo Pounders, you know, just, just as like a have all kind of thing. Um, but, I, you know, I, I really like the Dromai dash matchup. It's very close and it's a lot of fun. Kano. Um, we are also going heavy aggro here. Like, the only thing you can try to do is raise Kano and just, um, are you wanting to go first? Like, I'm trying to think. I think I want to try to go first and just push as much damage as possible against Kano. I still have all my aggro planning, right? Yeah, 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 okay. And then we're going to bring in Visiotronic model for the, uh, for the AB here. Um, we'll start with a Teclo Pounder. Um, all right. This is where our opponent will <laughs> probably... As a lot of Kano players I know say, uh, we'll take our first turn. So. Uh, no, I won't boost here because I know it's just four. Block two, take two. And then if they let me move to Arsenal here, I can just Arsenal and draw back up safely. Ooh, this is a really good high-octane hand. This is pretty good. Although, high-octane is one of those hands where, you know, you want to keep... You want to keep all of your... You want to use all your resources. Oh, wow. Ether Wildfire's... The card. Okay. I assume... Play... Player 2 played... No, I guess... My opponent just gonna kill me here? Would be actually insane. Choose an amount to pitch to prevent arcane damage. Total damage, seven? Jeez, bro. I mean... And then you end your turn there. 
Huh. I mean, maybe they're just wanting to chip in for as much as possible here. I don't know. That's uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll pitch that. Have one left. My opponent's going to activate Kano. And if they hit anything crazy, we're just kind of done here. Ether Dart says deal one damage. No, I don't want the X. Just let me click on these cards. Uh, Ether Flare, the next time. Yep, we'll pitch that. That'll deal me one. I cannot prevent any more. Yep, I'll boost because it makes it seven. Our opponent blocks three, takes four. Goes to 22. And then I'll just have to add pass after that. Having a hand. Hey, what's going on, Ghost? How are you, brother? I haven't, I haven't talked to you in a while, man. What you been up to? Well, this is a good hand. It's a little little resource heavy, but it's a good hand. Um, so this gets to come in for eight because of Teclo Pounder. And then if it hits, the next thing I boost gets plus three. I have no reactions. All right, they're going to activate Kano a bunch of times in response. I'm good, man. Uh, I've been working a lot recently. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> so I'm playing Flesh and Blood, uh, which is a new card game I got into recently. Um, it's a lot of fun, man. I've been really enjoying it. But, you know, I'm... Uh, uh, still no reactions. Uh, but you know, I mean, I hope work's been going well for you. You know, I mean, working a lot can be a good thing, or working a lot can be, you know, a little bit too much. So, it really depends on what kind of work you've been doing, but I hope it's not been too bad. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to click, like, I'm gonna have to click pass a bunch of times here. Um... I will prevent three and take one. Is Crucible a once per turn instant? Yeah, 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 okay. So, I mean, that's good at least. I know what Fab is. One of the guys I used to play Magic with is super good at Fab. Oh, that's cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's kind of funny. It, it's... You know, you never know who you're going to run into that knows what Flesh and Blood is. It's it's kind of like magic, honestly. Like, it, you never know who you're going to run into that knows what, oh, uh, that knows what, uh, um, that knows what, uh, that knows what magic is, you know? Like, it's just not something that is, is super, super relevant. You know, a lot of people don't know, know about it, um, in a lot of communities, so... This eight has been on the stack for a long time. Our opponent hitting Tom of Aetherwind was really good there. Have you heard of Michael Hamilton is by chance? Uh, yeah, I definitely know who Michael Hamilton is, man. I, uh, I follow him on Twitter. He's really good. I got to watch him play some at Pro Tour New Jersey back in May. Michael, are you, are you buddies with, uh, are you buddies with Michael Hamilton? Because he is insanely good at Flesh and Blood, man. That's my buddy, dude. That's so cool. That's awesome. Like, what a, what a small world. Now I know I'm saying that, you know, not like I know Michael Hamilton personally, but it it is pretty cool to, you know, that you're friends with him and that you know him. That's awesome. I was there when he first started playing Magic. Oh, that's dude. That's awesome. 
to like get to like like you know just be there on like that ground level kind of thing. That's really neat. All right, so that resolves. You know, I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of scared to continue going and do anything here, but... I kind of feel like I need to. Like, I, I kind of feel like I need to continue to push here. Now, this gets to... Oh, I activated heart. I wasn't paying any attention. Duh. Um, I de like while activating heart was really good to play around um, my opponent having something good. I definitely should have held on. Uh, should have just not activated heart there because I would have been coming in for eight. And yeah, that that was just that was just me not thinking there. That was just kind of a, a dumb play on my part there. Not really thinking. Uh, okay, the stack was zero, forty four, and ten, and one opponent side. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, guys. So this is like his exile. Um, this is how many cards are in his deck, and this is how many cards. This this is his graveyard essentially. Um, and and, and you know, flesh and blood doesn't work like magic. There's no lands. Um, you pitch cards, and this is the pitch zone. So it tells you like what you've pitched and what you haven't. Um, yeah, we'll come in for four here. Our opponent activates Kano here. Pits get shuffled back in, correct? Uh, it doesn't get it doesn't get shuffled back in. It goes to the bottom, um, so that's why, like in in, uh, in Flesh and Blood, you can do this thing called pitch stacking, um, where you like memorize what's on the bottom of your deck. I can only do it for about ten to fifteen cards, um, but I mean, it is still it is still pretty. It's a pretty good thing to be able to do. Yep, we'll boost here. Come in for three more. And did Grant go again? I, I like the way that they go about this. Like, I like the way the game is set up here. Like, I, I, I know it's all, like, user-made and, like, can be tough to understand at times, but I really, I really like... Pitch a high-speed impact. We'll come in for two more. I mean, our opponent's at six, and we're at 34. Now, against Kano, that doesn't really mean anything because they can just come in at any time and kind of kill us here. But I'm actually not going to Arsenal. I'm just going to keep the blue card in my hand. I think it would be better to have that. So our opponent trying to play Toma Fiendle. From their arsenal so they'll gain two cards and go back to nine and then have two floating so it's not bad just uh just some of the cards are so expensive yeah so the cards that are expensive are really like uh are your equipment pieces um and some of those can be pretty pricey they do get a little bit uh they do get a little pricey but the cool thing is that some of them kind of transfer in between decks um so it, it is kind of it's not it's not terrible um it is pretty neat what does this do? You may play snapback as though it were an instant. Oh, snapback. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. They're activating Crucible. So getting to where they're playing on their turn, which is pretty frightening, honestly.
Um, I guess I'll present, prevent zero of it and go down pretty low here. Our opponent's going to say go. All right, so we're going to get aggressive here, trying to put the finishing touches on the game. Yeah, we'll boost. Um, our opponent only blocks for three. That is interesting. Um, so I guess it doesn't really matter how we do it. We're gonna we're only gonna be able to prevent two AB here, which which is kind of risky. Might cost us the game. Of course, our opponent's blocking very quickly, so. Um, I'm just going to pass here. If they don't have anything to play here on my turn, they could activate Kano and try to do some stuff. I just get to Arsenal to 0-60, to 60, and then I'm set up in a pretty decent spot going into this next turn. This card gains Dominate. Ooh, interesting. So, I mean, that's just going to get to hit me. And then they're going to get to have six cards, basically. That's a scary thought. Ah, oh, man. I might be dead here. Because there's just nothing to do about that. Wow, Nourishing Emptiness. Like... They know if I'm playing Visiotronic model, I can't block it. So that's like actually, and our opponent did an arsenal. I don't know. I wonder if they clicked through it on accident or something. Um. So we need to make sure we leave both the blues in our hand here. Like we want to make sure we have as much as our in our hand as we can. Yeah, our opponent's got five cards here. I'm pretty sure they're trying to... I was like, they're... Well, I figured... Well, they're probably trying to decide if they're going to block or not here, which is pretty smart um, on their part. Well, they've already decided not to block, I think. So they hit a blue zap, and then they hit a blue snap bag. So they're not really hitting combo pieces. Like, they don't have a potion, like, they don't have an energy pot, or whatever it's called, and they don't have a potion of deja vu in play. I'm going to prevent none here, because I can just put on enough pressure to kill them. If they don't have, if they have nothing else to do here, then they're just, like, they're just dead, I'm pretty sure. Because we can just pop accelerator and pistol them an extra time. Um, so they went to one. Uh, yeah, we'll boost here. They will block three. We will pitch that, have two floating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our opponent's just dead here. Yeah, we'll boost. No block for three. load up the pistol do they have anything that blocks anything no so they're just dead okay pop accelerators getting an action point
And then, all right, cool. All right, so our, our third game was Kano there. Um, you know, I, I've never lost to Kano playing Dash. Now, I'm going to have to go knock on wood after this because it'll happen next time I play it. But it's it's just like Dash just feels really good. You know, having AB3 is really solid. Now, some people play Signal Jammer into Kano 2. Um, I did for a while when I wasn't playing D-Reacts or anything like that. Um, but it is, it is an option, um, and, and it is something to think about. Um... You know, Signal Jammer is a good card, and is and it's good in that matchup specifically. It's also decent in a Briar. Um, you know, but you know, honestly, um, I don't think it's needed. You know, having AB three and paying attention to when you're, you know, pitching your blues to AB. Um, and there was a couple of points, you know, like during like matches where I've bluffed having an extra blue and I haven't had it, where they would have killed me um, if they had the combo rolled up. So I mean, there was a little bit of mind games to go to it, but it, it's a pretty favored matchup for Dash, and you know, I enjoy it. So against Kano again. All right, well, I mean, we shall try it again. <clears throat> Headpiece, yep, cool. All right, good luck, opponent. Our opponent's probably deciding how to board or whether they want to play this again. Player two will go first. Makes sense. Yep. Well, I'm not going to lie. This is one of those... Yeah, I mean, th you know, the sad part is this is one of those turns our opponent could kill us. We're a deck that plays 24 blues consistently, um, and our opponent could just kill us right here because... <laughs> oh. Snapback. Hmm... <sighs> Um, prevent it, pitching this. Anything we don't have to take on turn one is what I would just consider that a win, honestly. Activating Kano here to see what they, see what they find. They find a blue ether flare. Seems fine. I will prevent the one. And then they're gonna snap back for one. And I'm gonna pitch a red T-bone. So <clears throat> we got pretty lucky that our opponent didn't have, you know, some pretty decent stuff rolled up there. We'll put that on the bottom first. So it feels wildly stupid like, straight up wildly stupid to go for the put a second pounder into play, especially considering we have a decent hand. What? Yeah, let's come in with high-speed impact. We'll come in for six here. You know, I mean, we're, we're attacking for 10 and holding up AB3. Like, I, I feel like that's a good trade-off. If I can do that consistently every turn, then I feel pretty okay with that. Um, now, that Aether Wildfire is scary. Like, scary, scary, scary. We might be pitching our other two cards... Um, it's also interesting to note that we haven't seen a blue. Um, you know, uh, yeah. We haven't seen a blue in two hands, which does not bode well for us because it means we'll probably have a hand somewhere along the way where we'll see, where we will see multiple blues. And that's, that's very awkward.
Um, I don't feel like preventing one is going to be doing anything for us, so we're just going to come in for four. Like, we're trading one for four here, which I guess we're playing it like, no, I just don't see that being the difference maker. Their Aether Wildfire hit us for one. So I'm just going to... I'm going to call it there. Um, we'll put Throttle the deck first. All right, all right. So this hand's good. I mean, basically playing anything does leave us with a red. Ether Spindle, where X is the amount of damage dealt. All right, so... I think the best play here is to pitch Shockwave. So we can pitch Shockwave, hold Zipper Hit, come in with Throttle, hold Combustible Courier, it only leaves us with AB1, but I think not giving them the option to do that is good for us. But, yeah. We don't know that they'll draw a combo next turn, so we'd rather just take one and let them only opt one. Because if we let them opt here, we're letting them set up for a higher chance um, of actually killing us. Uh, yep, yeah, we'll come in with Throttle. Now, considering we pitched a blue, our opponent probably thinks we have another blue. But they don't know that we don't. So, our opponent is probably blocking some amount here. They're probably going to activate Kano before they go to blocks. And then, well, no. They've already decided not to activate an instant, so I guess they could just be blocking here. Block all nine. Interesting. That is... That is... Honestly, I'm kind of surprised to see it. Um, okay. Deck, you're killing me. Where are the... Where are the blues at? I mean, we might just die to the fact that we don't have any blues in our hand. Like, this is not good. We're going to crack Goliath Gauntlet. We're going to play this pitching this. Now, we're doing this knowing that we're coming in for 8, but we're really saying to our opponent that we're coming in for 11 here. And also on top of that, we do have AB3, so it's not crazy to think that we, and plus, our opponent doesn't know that we're holding trip reds, like, unless they're stream sniping me, and I'm not well known enough to be stream sniped, so. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, we'll let that happen. Play Toma Fiendle. Now, they don't gain any life, but, you know, they do. So that hit. So we're coming in for eight here. I assume they're going to play instance. Yeah, I was like, I assume they're going to play instance in the reaction stage here. Um, okay. I mean, like, that's really good. Our opponent's working off five cards, and we have a red in our hand. Like, in, in what, three, four hands? It's, it's three or four hands. We've only seen one blue which is very bad in the Kano, and it's also very bad for our late game, because it means, I, I know I said this earlier, but we're just going to have a hand where it's awkward, and we have nothing but blues. Well, I like this little, like, chart to dictate where you are at in the turn.
Uh, I'm happy to just take one damage here from the Singe. Um, all right. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I guess we'll put the red on the bottom and we'll arsenal this. Now, deal three arcane damage. Deals damage. You may banish a wizard on attack action card. From your hand with cost one. If you do play it this turn is over an instant. So we're gonna prevent two and prevent this. I wanna keep the blue for their ether wildfire here. Like if they decide to do something like that, I really wanna be able to prevent the ether wildfire stuff here um, and stay in front of that game plan because that is like honestly that's how we lose. Like Ether Wildfire shenanigans is just straight up how we lose a game. Um, they're playing Lesson in Lava for three. So they definitely tried to... I think they like they definitely tried to bait me there by doing that. Um, or maybe they just felt like they wanted the Lesson in Lava to be able to do something relevant there. Um, we'll put the blue... Man, this is so bad. Like, again, we are facing down a turn where we could just be dead. Uh, Lord. Yep, we'll come in for three and boost here. Make our opponent, you know, do something. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to try to pass to you, opponent, here, because, honestly, passing signifies that I have a blue in my hand, and then I'm going to force you to beat me through a blue. So it at least makes you think. When the truth is, I just have a red. What is that? Oh, they're playing Potion at Deja Vu. Well, that is not good for me. All right, they got one floating. Did I reverberate? Reverber reverberate. Yeah, I think that's worth pitching here because there's no way for them to kill us with one card in hand and us at 33. I was like, they can pop Spellfire Cloak here if they want to hit me with a blue reverberate. Like, eh, you know, I'm okay with that if that's if that's their play here. Um, I already took some arcane damage, so. Yeah, I, I got nothing for you, so we're going to try and end the turn again. They're going to rearrange the pitch cards. Wow. That is a, another... Non-blue non hand. Good lord. Um... Yeah, we're going to boost here. I mean, they can either kill us here or we're going to kill them. This is one of the, like, Dash has a pretty good Kano matchup, honestly, because you have good AB and you have good colors. Now, we have seen that very little tonight. So, what else did they pitch? Oh, just a Tome? How do they pitch just a Red Tome to activate Kano? Oh, okay, there we go. 
Or are they activating Kano again? No, they're playing Potion of Deja Vu. Ah, gotcha. So they're wanting that to come off the top. So they're going to Toma Fiendal. No, they're going to play that. They're going to play Tom into draw two cards, and they'll have a Tom of and an unknown in their hand. Oh, no, they activated Kano again to put Tom of there. So they're going to draw two cards off the Tom. Then they're going to... Pitch a card. Play Tom of Fiendal to draw two cards. They pitch a red reverberate. Activate Kano. Opt to. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would like to boost. So our opponent going to go for the kill right here? Interesting. They decided not to block? I mean, I guess they're going to go for it here, play the Aether Wildfire. Like, and this is where you're, this is where I'm going to pitch zipper hit uh, throttle. Which is funny because I will have ended up pitching all four cards, all four cards, my entire hand this turn. it's doing here I mean I assume they're going to like they're gonna like pitch a blue to activate metacarpus node and then activate so they're gonna play storm striders okay so they spent their one they had there so they're gonna play a card from their hand okay that's fine Okay, activate Crucible. That makes sense. And then play Aether Wildfire. And it's just coming in for four. Why uh, for five? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna prevent three here. Um and then take two. And then Oh, they're playing the Aether Wildfire from there. Oh no. Oh no. This is not good. They have a blue in their hand. I might just be dead. Or even if they don't have a blue, they could use Ragamuffin's hat to go for a blue here. I don't know. There's, there's quite a few options here. I mean, Aether Wildfire costs two. So... They can only play two spells here, though. I mean, they can probably, I don't know how much they can do. That's that's the thing about Kano is like, I don't ever really know how much they can do. They're one wildfire dealt two to me. So this wildfire is coming in for four. It's coming in for six. And I can prevent one take five. And then their last card... 
Yeah, I have to prevent one, and then their last card is going to come in for... It's coming in for five. We prevented one, took four, so we've taken six arcane total here this turn, which means they're... Uh, is Ether Flare the card that scares me? I deal arcane damage instead deal damage plus X. Yep, so I mean... Yeah, sorry, I forgot I had to pass there. Yeah, so they're going to Ether Flare me for... Eight, and I'm going to say... Zero and take eight, go to 18. I mean, had they had another card, they could have done quite a bit here, but now they're just going to die because they don't have a way to gain any resources. So our last match was Kano also. Um, you know, honestly, my feelings are the same as they were, you know, after the third game. You know, it, it's, it, it can be a close match, and our opponent got pretty close there. I um, mean, you know, I was down to 18, so another card or two, and, and I was very close to dead. Um, now, my opponent got into a situation where it was combo or die, so I understand why they went for it. It just didn't work out for him. Um, you know, I Dash just has a decent, you know, um, has a decent uh, Kano matchup. You know, playing 24 blues puts you in a pretty good spot, in my opinion, you know, because you're normally able to pitch a blue, come in for a bunch, and then still keep a blue in your hand. So, with that being said, um, I really enjoyed the Dash League and getting to play against a bunch of different things, um, you know, uh, I've never really done a video, video like this, uh, so I'm, you know, I'm open to any feedback. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.